So a few months ago, I discovered this fancy new note-taking app called Roam Research. And not gonna lie, initially I was a bit skeptical, but I've now been using it pretty much every day for the last four months. It has transformed my workflow in certain ways. And so in this video, I'll break down exactly how and why I use Roam, and we'll go over some of the features and the drawbacks so you can decide whether it's the right app for you. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor working in Cambridge, and this is the first episode of Appy Hour, a new series where I'm gonna be reviewing apps Let's dive into Rome. As usual, there's gonna be timestamps here and in the video description, so you can skip around the video if you feel like it. So firstly, what is Rome? Well, Rome is basically a glorified note-taking app. On their website, they call it a tool for thought. It's an app that allegedly helps you think better and produce stuff more better. That sounds really weird to say. Um, but it's, it's, it's basically a glorified note-taking app, but it's got a few features and a few different ways of operating that separates it from more traditional note-taking apps like Evernote and Notion. With Roam, there's basically two key features that separate it from everything else. The first one is that when you open up the app, you start off with a blank page called the, the Daily Note. And every day you have a new Daily Note. So today is July the 20th, 2020. And so I've just got this blank screen with a blinking cursor and a bullet point. And now I can start writing whatever I want. It is that simple. Like there's no official folders. There's no structure of like notebooks and the notes within that. It is literally just a blank page and you can start writing from the blank page. So that's feature number one. And key feature number two that makes Rome what it is, is a feature called bi-directional linking. That's kind of hard to explain. So I'll show you how it works. Let's say you want to write something. So I've written it. Today I read Slave to Sensation by Nalini Singh. Pretty good author, good paranormal romance series. The way bi-directional linking works is I can highlight slave to sensation and I can press the square bracket key. And over there, what you've well, what it's done is that it's generated square brackets around the thing that I'm writing and it's offered to create a page for it. So I can click on that. And now a separate page has been automatically created for the phrase slave to sensation. Equally, I can do the same thing with Nalini Singh. I can turn her into a page. Now this is a link. Now what's gonna happen when I click on this link? Let's click on Nalani Singh. And this is a blank page, but you'll see over here, we've got one linked reference. And that is a linked reference to July the 20th, 2020, where it says, today I read this by Nalani Singh. So that is what bi-directional linking means. It means we can go on our daily note, we link in one direction to whatever page we want, but then it also tells us the linked references to the pages that have linked to it, if that makes sense. So between those two features, the daily note and bi-directional linking, that's basically the foundation that the whole of this app, Rome Research, is built on. And there's loads of other features, which I talk more about in my videos on Nebula. I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. But essentially, those two are the key features. And so if you're watching this now, those two features might not seem that groundbreaking, but I'll show you some of my use cases and why those two features are like the best thing ever. So one of my favorite things to use Rome for is for book notes. Um, so for example, if we look at the book, The Elephant in the Brain, which I can see that I finished on June the 28th, um, essentially I've created this page for The Elephant in the Brain. And for example, started June 26th, that is a bi-directional link. So if I shift click on that, I can see exactly what I was doing on June the 26th, if I want to. Then I've written recommended by, and I usually have this for all my book notes, recommended by, and I've linked to Nat Eliason. He's one of my favorite bloggers. You can check out his website. And he's actually got a, a course on how to use Rome, which I took link in the video description. Anyway, um, I click on Nat Eliason and I don't have any stuff written for him. This is a blank page, but we can see there are 11 linked references. So I've linked to Nat Eliason like 11 different times. And so there was this article, another book he recommended, another book, this is an evergreen note, more on that later. Um, and a few different things that this guy, uh, you know, I've, I've referenced him in, in various notes throughout the last four months. And so at some point when I email him or DM him on Twitter and say, hey, do you want to feature in a deep dive on my channel or something? I'll have this long list of stuff where it'll just automatically tell me every time I've mentioned him in, in anything. Going back to the book notes, I've got my rating 10 out of 10, book cited, book rational ritual, which I now click on. Uh, I've said bought on July the 1st, recommended from a passage in this book, hashtag TBR, which means to be read. And so if I click on TBR, it shows all of the books that are linked to the phrase TBR because you can link stuff with a hashtag as well. And those are all the books that I want to read for now. Anyway, let's get onto the actual stuff. So essentially what you can do in Rome is it's a, it's a note taking app. You build the notes based on these bullet points. And so what I'm doing is I am kind of summarizing the different chapters of the book and hopefully trying to write it in my own words along with some different quotes. And so there's nothing really special here. It's just kind of a nice note-taking app. 
But for example, what I can do is while I'm writing my book notes, I can expand stuff. Here we go. So common knowledge recommendation for book, the rational ritual. So as I was writing that, I turned that into, into its own link and I filled out the details for that. If we go down here um, in the chapter about self-deception, we've got recommendation book, why everyone else is a hypocrite. Shift, click on that, opens up in the sidebar and I've added that to the to be read list as well. So another thing I can do while I'm writing my book notes is if I find something that I want to turn into its own page because it's it's interesting, it becomes an evergreen note, then I can select something like the Machiavellian intelligence hypothesis. That seems like the sort of thing that's kind of cool that I'd want to make a note about to make myself remember it. So all I have to do is highlight it, double square brackets. It's now turned into its own page. I can now either open the page directly or I can shift click to open it in the sidebar. And then I can write my own notes on the Machiavellian intelligence hypothesis. And if we go on the actual page, I can immediately see where it's referenced. So this is the sort of thing that might be called an evergreen note. The idea is that as I'm reading the book, I'm taking notes on the book, I'm creating these ever evergreen notes as we go along. And so in future, if this sort of concept becomes relevant, maybe in like three years time, I come across the Machiavellian intelligence hypothesis again, or I think about how it might feature in like a video or an article or something, I'll have this page and I'll see, oh, I first discovered this way back in July 2020 when I read The Elephant in the Brain because this linked reference is there automatically. The second thing is my workflow for evergreen notes. So we've talked about how we've got book notes on all of this kind of stuff. The second one is that I've got this page called Trees of Knowledge and within here I'm slowly building up my bank of evergreen notes. So for example, within the topic of life we have the four important things in life. So let's click on that. I actually can't remember what it says. Oh, okay, this is interesting. So I've tagged this with hashtag evergreen because I'm hoping this is gonna be an evergreen note. Uh, hashtag life, hashtag meaning, hashtag happiness. Sounds a bit corny, but those are sort of the, it, it, it works like a simple tagging system. So for example, if I look at happiness, these are the 15 linked references to happiness that I've got. Oh, and I've got, I've also used the word happiness like a load of times. I just haven't explicitly linked to it. Anyway, that's not what I wanna talk about. More on that in the video series on Nebula, <laughs> which I'll tell you more about at the end of the video. But kind of this note called the four important things in life is an evergreen note that I made after listening to this podcast episode with Naval Ravikant and Samantha Ryan. And so what I did while I was listening to this and, and afterwards is that I got quotes out of the podcast. And for each of them, I kind of turned an interesting point into an evergreen note. So for example, I made one called work is synonymous with misery and these are my own notes. How do we define work? Maybe one way is to define it as inherently unpleasant. Something is a hobby if it's fun and it's work if it's not fun. Source Naval. And I've got a linked linked reference to Rome. We're, we're kind of getting into the weeds here, but that's fine. So this quote over here, it's, it's not just copied and pasted. It's actually referencing the original source. So if I click on that, it shows us the original source that it's part of this podcast episode with Naval and Samantha Ryan. And so if I make changes to one of it, it will automatically update all the references across the board. Whereas in other note-taking apps, to have that sort of feature, you need to do a lot of copying and pasting. Anyway, um, this podcast episode helped me generate a lot of evergreen notes. And in my workflow series on Nebula, I've got like a detailed tutorial of how I make these evergreen notes, but this is just kind of an overview. The third use case for Rome is that often within my daily notes, I will do my morning pages. Uh, now morning pages is this kind of creative exercise where at the start of each day, the idea is that you just write three pages of longhand as in written by hand, continuous prose. And that kind of helps you get stuff off your mind. It helps you come up with new creative insights. I don't like doing it on pen and paper because my writing speed is a lot slower than my typing speed. And so often if I've got like a day off work or something, I will do morning pages where I just kind of write a ton of bullet points. And through writing those, I can create links and stuff I'm not going to show you them because I like to keep those private because they're, you know, personal stuff as well as business stuff. Um, but that's an, that's another nice thing that I use Rome for. And often I found that notes that I'm making in my morning pages actually link to books or podcasts that I'd listened to over the last few months. Point number four is something I've actually started doing more recently, I think over the last few weeks, and that is using a Rome daily notes template. So using the app Alfred, I've created a snippet that if I type in Rome daily, it automatically creates this sort of stuff. Let's just get rid of those two. So initially we've got this little thing, your daily reminder, don't ignore your dreams, don't work too much, say what you think, <laughs> cultivate friendships, be happy. I'm cringing a little bit. Um, but this is from a blog post by I think Paul Graham, where he talks about a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. And the top five regrets of people who are dying are, they wish they didn't ignore their dreams, they wish they'd worked less, 
They wish they said more what they thought. They wish they'd kept in touch with friends and they wish they'd given themselves the permission to be happier. And so what he's done is he's converted that into this sort of list of five directives, which I now have at the top of my to-do list each day. So it kind of reminds me about, you know, these are the five regrets of the dying that I need to remind myself not to sort of lose focus on. Anyway, um, the point is this daily Rome template gives me these six things, create, connect, consume. The other the other three are a bit, are a bit uh, ropey. Celebrate, coordinate and consolidate. This is also a little bit cringe, I'm sorry. But basically the idea is that it sort of gives me these six categories of things that I want to focus on each day. And so under create, I might be like filmed um, a role. Oh, and over there, what I did is that um, I'm filmed a roll and screen recording for, so I've double open bracketed and now I, because I'm creating a page, I've typed in Rome and it's telling me what all of my different Rome pages are. And I know that I've got a page for this very video. So this is video Rome intro done. So that is under the create thingy. Under the connect thing is usually when I write notes about people that I've spoken to that day. And I have a little reminder within the template, message someone I haven't spoken to in a while. So let's see what's on the connect list. Um, let's say helped Jake and Molly move house, for example. Uh, sometimes I'd even have a to-do list here. So for example, I need, I always like having on my to-do list each day, a reminder to call my grandma. So I might write call Nani, that's my grandma. And if I do command enter, it turns it into a to-do item. More on that on the Nebula workflow thingy, because there's like a whole long thing that you can do around to-do lists. Under consume, I usually link to the stuff that I've, I've consumed that day. So what have I done? What have I consumed today? So let's say on the drive to work today, I'm, I'm listening to the book War Doctor on Audible. So continued. So you can see over here, I've just typed in the word war and it is telling me well, self-awareness has war in it. But book War Doctor is what I want. Continued listening to that. Uh, Cerebrate is a bit crap. Um, it sort of means sort of thinking, but it's like a really poor synonym for it. Um, but within that, I usually have if I've created any evergreen notes. So for example, if I was listening to that podcast with Naval and Samantha Ryan, I might tag here um, the four the four important things in life, because that would be something that I've thought about and something that I've created an evergreen note about. Coordinate is usually kind of things on my calendar. So for example, I had weekly uh, Zoom meeting with Christian, Angus, and Liz, who are the four members of my team. And then I can write more about the stuff that we did in our weekly meeting. I was actually taking notes with from that meeting in Notion. I still use Notion for a lot of team-based stuff. I also have a video on Nebula in the workflow series about Rome versus Notion, but more on that later. <laughs> Sorry, I keep on plugging that because you know there's, there's just so much to dive into with Rome. Um, it's hard to talk about in one video, but I'll definitely do more videos about it. Anyway, and then consolidate. Is another really poor synonym. Basically, it means it reminds me to focus on my health and like consolidate my life. And so if I'm, for example, doing a workout or if I need to do a workout, I might write workout day becomes a to do list with a command and enter. And so, for example, I always have the app open on my laptop, but also when I'm at work, Rome has a web app. You just go in roomresearch.com and it works on all the crappy work computers in the hospital. And so I always kind of have this up so that if I've got moments of downtime during the day, I can look at my Rome list and I can be like, OK, I need to call Nani. Have I got 20 minutes to take a quick break and call my grandma or workout day. I can't do that at work. But for example, I could be like, oh yeah, I'm listening to the book War Doctor. Why don't I add more notes uh, from what I listened to this morning? So it just sort of, it's it's a very kind of cross-platform way that I can just have a reminder of all the things that I'm doing that day. And it encourages me to take more notes on the stuff that I'm, I'm consuming. Finally, I just want to show you quickly um, something that I call the Nibble framework. This is based on uh, my friend Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain online course. It's very good, link in the video description. Uh, but basically, Anytime I read, watch, listen to anything, I tag it with the phrase nibble, with the word nibble, because I I kind of view every piece of content that I consume to be a nibble of some sort. And all of these nibbles are awaiting digestion. <laughs> this is again, really weird and cringe, but it's just, you know, I like calling it these weird things because I mean, I, I, I suppose really it's just a content inbox, but the phrase content inbox sounds boring AF. Therefore I like the word nibble. It just sounds more playful and more nice anyway. Nibbles awaiting digestion. So for example, I listened to this podcast, Hugh Jackman and Tim Ferriss um, on, on July the 11th, finished podcast of that, whatever. And I've tagged it with the word nibble. And that means 
using Roam filters, using this query, again, more on this on Nebula, um, it's now in my list of things, nibbles awaiting digestion. Once I have digested a nibble, so let's look at this article. This is one of Nut's articles. Um, it's just a good example. Lessons from one year of nomadic passive income. Uh, I've said hashtag nibble, but I've also said hashtag digested, which means I have gone through the article and I have converted the insights into my own words and created evergreen notes based on that. So in that article, he talked about this concept of ikigai, which I thought, oh, that would be a good evergreen note. So I made an evergreen note for it, for ikigai, and I included this thing from Google Images and, and stuff. Uh, and I've got a few references and you can see some linked references. So I've, I've converted the insights from the article into my own notes, into these evergreen notes. And once I've done that for the whole article, it becomes hashtag digested, which means it no longer appears in this nibbles awaiting digestion category. And this system just sort of encourages me to think a little bit more harder about the stuff that I read, watch and listen to. Because even with a system like, you know, if you're familiar with my Notion setup, my resonance calendar, I used to have my resonance calendar and I used to add stuff to it but there was just no real process to encourage me to actually take notes about it and actually mine the insights from it. Whereas calling this stuff nibbles and making them await digestion to be digested um, and having kind of this to-do list of things to digest means that at any moment, for example, if I'm at work and I've got a spare 20 minutes, I can look through this list and think, ah, oh, you know, uh, man's search for meaning. I read that the other day on the 12th of July, 2020, and here are some references to it. Oh, so you can see that I bought it on July the 2nd and I started listening to it on July the 12th and I finished it on July the 13th. And this is just stuff, I mean, it's just kind of nice knowing that I bought it and then like 10 days later, I, I started listening to it and finished it in two days. But it just means that when I'm on a computer, I have this list of default things that I could be doing. So I could be like, oh, okay, what's on my nibble list? Man search for meaning. Okay, cool. Let me go through my Kindle highlights because I was highlighting it on Kindle while also highlighting bits on Audible. Um, I can go through my Kindle highlights and I can convert those into evergreen notes. And this just gives me something to do when I have nothing better to do, it's a good default activity. All right, let's talk about pricing. Now, unfortunately, Roam is not free. It's it's kind of good that it's not free because it's really hard to make the economies around free apps actually work. And I kind of prefer to pay for apps that I'm using for a long period of time because I know that by paying for them and if an app has like a paid model, I know it's probably gonna be around for a while. Whereas every year there are so many free note-taking apps that spring up but really only a handful of them last the test of time. Pricing wise, Roam costs $15 a month. That is quite a lot. That is one of the most expensive subscriptions that I pay for. They have a 31 day free trial that you can sign up to if you want. And if you're a full-time student or in financial hardship, or you earn less than $25,000 a year, or you're a teacher or you're a researcher, they've got this scholars program that you can apply to. And with that scholars program, they give like half price discounts, sometimes even full price discounts to whoever sort of wants it. So more on that on the website, I'll link that in the video description. But yeah, it's $15 a month and $15 a month is a lot to pay for a note taking app. I personally think it's completely worth it because to be honest, any app that can improve my workflow for improving my thinking or improving my life or improving my productivity or helping me make more videos, basically anything like that is totally, totally, totally gonna be worth the money. Honestly, if Rome was $50 a month, I'd probably still think it's worth it. And actually I, I pay a lot more than $50 a month for a lot of different apps that help run this YouTube channel. And a lot of them I use a lot less than I use Rome. I use Rome literally every day. And so $15 a month, I think is completely worth it for the right sort of person, it'll also be completely worth it. And in fact, I don't pay $15 a month for it because I've actually signed up to their Believer plan, which is $500 upfront, <laughs> but then you get Roam for five years. So that becomes $100 a year, which becomes like $8 a month. Um, but I've signed up to the $500 Believer plan because I believe in the app so much. Um, I'm not being paid to say this at all. They're not sponsoring this video in any way in the slightest. I don't even think they have an affiliate program. It would be nice if they did. Connor, if you're watching this, please make an affiliate program for Roam because I'd love to recommend it to more people. But yeah, you know, I, I pay $500 for the five years. Totally worth it. Yeah, I get, I, I, I get that a lot of people watch my videos and think, oh bro, why do you only talk about paid apps? It's because I, I consider these apps as like an investment in my future and in my life. And I would happily blow $15 on like a takeaway, which, which is objectively bad for me. Why wouldn't I spend $15 a month or $8.33 a month via the five-year package? Why wouldn't I spend that on an app that improves my life in more meaningful ways than a single takeaway? for example, but you know, I get there for a lot of people, $15 a month or $8 a month, or even $7.50 a month on the scholars package might not be worth it. Finally, let's talk about some drawbacks. And when, when I was drafting this video, I was thinking, well, one of the drawbacks is that Rome only has a web app, but actually as of yesterday, they've now released a sort of desktop app and an iOS app and an Android app. So you can 
kind of use those. They're not fully featured native apps. They're sort of progressive web applications if you know anything about kind of apps and stuff. So it's not quite the performance of like a proper app, but those proper apps are under development. It's quite a small team of people that's running it and I think they're doing a great job. The other kind of annoying thing about Roam is that very occasionally it takes ages to reload the page. Sometimes if you hit the refresh button, you'll be waiting maybe 30 seconds for it to reload. In the last like two months, I can think of like two or three times that this has happened. It used to happen a lot in the early days of Rome, but I think they're they're making a lot of changes to the infrastructure and making it a lot more performative. So that's kind of nice. And the final annoying thing about it that people say is that there's there's quite a bit of a learning curve to it. Like when you open up the app, you're confronted with just a blank page and you're sort of expected to know what to do with the blank page. Um, which is why courses like my videos on Nebula or for example, Nat Eliasson's Rome course, link in the video description, stuff like that is quite helpful. And I personally took Nat's course um, as a sort of introduction on how to use Rome for these different use cases. But the idea is that probably you don't wanna copy exactly what someone else is doing. You probably wanna look at what other people are doing, play around with it yourself, and then figure out if you can sort of build Rome into your own workflow. If you're looking for a more in-depth guide on how I personally use Roam to make my life better in every way, then you might like to check out my workflow series on Nebula. It's a series that I add new videos to each month and it's basically where I kind of deep dive full nerd level style into my favorite apps. So I've got a lot of videos about Roam, a lot of videos about Notion, a few videos about how I consume podcasts and how I read articles and how I transition those into my second brain. And so if you're a massive nerd like me, you might wanna check that series out. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming platform that me and a bunch of other creative friends are helping to build. It's kind of like an alternative place where we can put content that might not necessarily work on YouTube. So for example, a long introduction or like a series of 10 videos on how I use Roam. Clearly I'm not gonna make 10 videos on how I use Roam in a row on YouTube because the algorithm just wouldn't work for that but Nebula is the sort of place that I can put those videos. So on Nebula, I've got this workflow series along with a deep dive series where each of the kind of two hour long interviews, like live stream interviews I've done on the channel, we chop those up into bite-sized snippets of wisdom. So each one has about like five to 10 bite-sized segments. So you can watch those in kind of two to five minutes rather than having to sit through a two hour live stream. It's not just my stuff on Nebula. There's also a lot of exclusive content from other educational-ish creators that you might've heard of like Thomas Frank, Wendover Productions, Legal Eagle. And we also get to collaborate in ways that might not work on YouTube. For example, one of my favorite YouTubers, Tom Scott, has this amazing documentary called Money where he pits a few famous YouTubers against each other and explores the psychology of money and lying and gambling and it's, it's, it's so good. To get access to Nebula, the best way is to sign up to CuriosityStream, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. CuriosityStream is the world's leading documentary streaming subscription platform. And because CuriosityStream also love educational creators like me and some of my friends, um, we've got this bundle where if you sign up to CuriosityStream, you get completely free access to Nebula, not just for a short period of time, but for as long as your CuriosityStream subscription lasts. They're currently running a promotion where you can get 26% off the annual premium subscription to CuriosityStream. So for less than $15 a month, you get access to high quality, high budget documentaries from people like David Attenborough and Chris Hatfield. And bundled with that completely free of charge, you also get all of this exclusive content that's available on Nebula. So if you click on the link in the video description, you'll get both CuriosityStream and Nebula at 26% off, or you can go to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali and use the coupon code Ali at checkout to get the same deal. If you like this video, here is a playlist of more app themed videos about how I take notes using Notion and how that compares to Rome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.